talk a little bit about recruiting. Um, I consider our recruiting efforts uh, in the region, which is kind of a four or five state area. I consider them uh, outside the region, region, which we Wisconsin and Illinois, and Missouri, and schools that are that are outside the, the adjacent states. And then I, I consider uh, the faraway states like Arizona, uh, Florida, California, where we sign guys, is, is kind of the, the remote areas. And every one of our coaches has a has a near area. Some are good areas. Some are they produce one recruit every two years, in in, in, in reality. And then they have remote areas like Josh Davis. Our receivers coach has a couple of rural areas, one in Wisconsin and one in Minnesota, and he had one recruit from that area, too. I guess two recruits from that area this year, and then he had uh, California. So his efforts are uh, mostly in California. You've got a list of our, our recruits on your table. Uh, it, it's, it's a little messy uh, uh, to go through. Uh, we signed 21 young men, meaning when you sign a young man, that means he gets a scholarship. Signs a national letter of intent with a national letter of intent as a scholarship tender. Okay? If a young man chooses to walk on, or as we call him, a non scholarship recruited athlete, I don't like the term walk on, I'll talk about that in a little while also, um, then he can't do that. And for the first time, the Missouri Valley made us distinguish between those guys. And so we have the list of 21 guys on our signing list. And then in the back, they, they came up with some fancy term, preferred walk on. Uh, you know, I, again, I don't, I don't like the term walk I, I, I understand it and so on. But these eight guys that have committed to South Dakota State and are coming there without a scholarship were recruited, came on official visits, on and on and on, and you just can't offer everybody a scholarship. So you, you, want, to, you want to know the heroes in my mind, it's those eight guys. It's not the guy from Arizona that got his school paid for. It's the guy from Bloomer, Wisconsin that was offered a scholarship at UND and said, I'm going to go to South Coast State because I like him and I, I can pursue my dream there. That's, that would be one, one example. And really, I, I kind of think of myself as a walk-on when I think about coaching and, and how I grew up in the in this system. So I have, I, I have a, a soft spot or a, a spot in my heart for those guys that are willing to pursue their dream without everything being perfect. And, uh, and, and how do we recruit those guys to beat that up a little bit more? I show them in our press guide. I don't, there are no stories in recruiting. This young man, these young men are making the most important decision in their lives. If they don't come, that's fine. But they know they heard the real story at South Dakota State. And that doesn't always happen in recruiting. You know, I'll talk about that in a little while, too. Um, but I show them the 10 guys in our roster that were non-scholarship guys. And, and then obviously, you highlight guys like Ryan McKnight, who was offered at the University of South Dakota, came to South Dakota State, two-time All-American, and, and uh, now feels like he has a chance to play in the NFL. Praise the Lord. And those are neat stories. Those are fun to be part of. Um, but anyway, those, those eight guys are in the back. I'm going to go through our signing list and, and try to, I always try to give you a little bit of inside story. So I'm going to go over, I think, uh, seven or eight guys, and I want to tell you some unique stories, get you in the recruiting trails, and if that bores you again, uh, Somebody have to leave earlier, leave, leave even earlier, right? But to me, this is more interesting than you know, we lost to you and I by a play, all right? Uh, the first guy on the list there is Brandon Andrews. Brandon Andrews was the third rated guy on our wide receiver list. What we do is we take all our wide receivers, we watch them all, we look at their grades, we draw a line, and then we go out to get to know them. This is before we've met them most of the time. Most of the time it's in, in, in November, early December. Well, he, he came to our place late in recruiting. Uh, we offered him a scholarship. He committed the next week, verbally committed. And what does that mean? That means like shaking hands and say, I'll be there. And some guys are there and some guys aren't. All right? So it's a verbal commitment. And uh, uh, Wednesday of that week, Colorado calls him up, says we're coming to the school. Colorado's going to the Pac-10, which is where he grew up in California. So, you know, holy cow, I got, I got one option in South Dakota State. You know where the beaches are white, but they're white with snow, not sand. And uh, and Colorado, so Colorado flies in Wednesday, Thursday, whatever. Flies him out Friday. He has an official visit. This is the weekend before the signing. So this is the Wednesday. This is the weekend before the Wednesday to sign. So he goes back. We have a guy from from Wisconsin that we've offered a scholarship. Also, we got Brandon. Brandon's our top guy. 
And we said, we got no, Brandon. Well, I got it. I don't know what Colorado's doing. So he said, call Colorado and ask him if they're going to offer you a scholarship. He goes to his coach. Well, he called Colorado. Coach wouldn't call Colorado, right? So the kid's got to call Colorado, gets his recruiting coach, his position coach. He says, am I going to get a scholarship? And the guy says, if I was your dad, I'd recommend you take the scholarship to South Dakota State. So Monday night he commits again to us, verbally commits again to us. We go through signing date on Wednesday, and his his letter of intent does not come in. All right? So we call him up and say, what's up, Brandon? You know, we got to get this release. we got to have your signature. He said, Colorado sent me a letter of intent at 11 o'clock today, and I signed it. They faxed it to him, and I signed it. He said, but there's a problem. He said, I called him back to tell him I signed it, the fax is on the way in Colorado. Now, this is the ugly part of recruiting. And it isn't about a Colorado, it's about NCAA Division I football. Uh, Colorado said, uh, yeah, you got a scholarship, but it's only going to be good for one year. Because we only got to recruit for about two months this year. Next year, we're going to cut everybody's scholarships and go out and get better guys. <coughs> you got to question their IQ to tell the kid that, number one. But that is legal. The scholarship's good for one year. And so Brandon says, and I, well, I, I high five the guy, I want to hug him. Brandon says, will you let me out of my scholarship? And they said, I don't know. And so we went, we found this out, we went to their AD and their compliance person, and they eventually, eventually tore up his, uh, his uh, letter of intent. So I'm excited <laughs> they have Brandon Andrews. He's a good football player. Um, Jorian Butler. Jorian Butler was offered at San Diego State University, the other SDSU in America this summer. Went over there for an official visit, and they pulled his scholarship. All right, so this young man had quit, quit recruiting, had quit putting his name out there, and uh, San Diego State University cut it, said we we're full at cornerback, we're, we're dropping you. So we got in the mix, we, we offered him a scholarship, he came up, he committed on campus, which I hate. I hate that when a young man comes up. I mean, that's what coaches, hope happens, but to me that's the emotions of it. I want a kid that is 100% committed. I want him to go home and talk to to mom. So we go back, we go back to Arizona to talk to Jorian's mother. It's a single parent family. And you know, there's a there's a coach in I'm gonna deviate a second. There's a coach in Michigan that's been quoted, he'd rather recruit kids from two parent families. Now that's probably not a good statement to make when you're trying to go out and recruit guys. I think what he what he maybe wanted to say is uh, he wishes kids maybe had more two parent situations. Regardless of that, I go into this home, it's a single parent mom, right? I'll recruit this type of kid anytime. This mom showed the whole youth football team how to throw a football, right? <laughs> she was leading the charge, right? And so I said, I like this combination, right? And again, I'm not judging two parent homes, single parent homes. He's a good football player. Jimmy Forsythe, the next guy, the fifth guy down, I, I believe he was rated or voted the, the top player in the Omaha area, maybe all in Nebraska. When we went into his school, he's a quarterback. Went into his school, I'm sitting there with his head coach, um, about as far away as with Jerry Oster here, and I said, uh, you know, would you play him a quarterback? He's a little guy, he's a runt. And the guy looks at me and goes, any coach that doesn't play him a quarterback is nuts. He's crazy, something like that. Well, I'm crazy, man, because we're gonna play him a cornerback, not uh, quarterback. Great young man, unbelievable young man. Uh, Cam Jones, uh, down there, the kid from Burnsville. Big, tall, skinny guy. Played three years of, of, of quarterback at Burnsville. He got sacked, I think, as many times as he completed pass, passes during the season. I mean, not a very good football team. Unbelievable young man. And he's going to play tight end for us. He's going to grow up. And I'm going to tell you a story you get real in-depth here. I'm sitting in the school of Cam Jones, and we have ten tough questions that we try to distinguish between who really has some fiber, has some fabric. You know, what is this kid really about? And the last question is, tell me what your greatest accomplishment is. You know, and what I'm looking for there is a kid that says, our team did this, or I was part of this, as opposed to, I was the most valuable guy in my, you know, because I, I don't like those guys. Because football isn't about being the most valuable. That's a goofy award in football, because 11 guys got to do it every play. But anyway, I look at, and I asked Cam Jones that, and he is a mature kid, all right? And he looks at me and kind of thinks, and he goes, I think it's the man I've become, coach. That's my greatest accomplishment. And I wanted to jump up and hug him, all right? 
go ahead two weeks and I'm in Camp Jones' home. And his mom is intense. She is grilling me. All right? She is making me earn my paycheck. I get paid a lot of money, but she, I'm, I'm, I don't get paid enough for all. She's abusing me. All right? And it gets to a point, and I, I'm doing okay. I'm surviving. I get to the point, and she goes, you know what? You remember asking Cam a question in school? And I don't come. <laughs> She's going to make me a review two weeks ago. And I, and I thought, okay, yes or no question? Uh, yes. She said, do you remember the answer? <laughs> and I said, ma'am, I do not. And uh, I did then. And uh, it's, it's, it's on my hard drive permanently now because of that. But uh, the Camp Jones, after the home visit, I left. Two days later, he committed to us, committed to us before he even came to campus. It wasn't because of my sales. It was because of Coach Brown recruiting him, Coach Moore recruiting him, Coach... Meadows recruiting all guys that would affect uh, his life. Um, Brandon Moore, uh, Brandon Moore's from Sioux Falls, Washington. Uh, Sioux Falls, Washington. And, and you know, again, I don't know how, how to tread on this. You know, Yankton versus whoever. But uh, I think Sioux Falls, Washington is a pretty good football program. And Coach Hermanson, who's their head football coach, I think deserves a lot of credit. But I think guys like Brandon Moore did not get caught up in the in the current. I think Brandon Moore really helped create that program. That's the type of young man he is, and I'm excited about that. He's going to play linebacker for us. He's intense. His dad's a graduate, played at Augustana, so I can't wait to see him with an SDSU uh, football man. So, uh, uh, down at the bottom is Trevor Wesley. Trevor Wesley uh, is a young man from Tucson, Arizona. If you remember, Ryan Crawford played quarterback for us a couple years ago, same high school. Trevor Re Wesley, we recruited for seven days. Okay, now how do you get to know a kid in seven days? A uh, bit of a risk, ask a lot of questions, call a lot of people. But it, he sent us an email. I was on my way to Phoenix with Coach Brown to, to recruit down there. He's from Tucson. We, 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 we commun a bunch of people are communi uh, communicating with him. He drove up for his home visit. He drove to Phoenix from Tucson for his home visit. We home visited him, he flew out, and he committed uh, that weekend. Fast guy. Uh, really good football player. Yeah, people would say he's a diamond in the rough. There's a lot of people in Phoenix, in Arizona, and, and just there are guys that got signed at North Dakota State. We didn't even get to because there's six million people just in the Phoenix area, and so uh, we're excited to get him. And then my favorite guy of all time, all right, J.R. Plody. He was the fourth guy from the bottom. J.R. Plody, to tell you what kind of kid this guy is, and you know what? These, these stories don't win the football games. They don't keep my job but they make me feel good as a human being that, that we do things right and we recruit uh, what I consider really good, great student athletes. Uh, I'm at, uh, in, in Washington State with our son this, this last Thursday and Friday looking at a school for him. Uh, he's a senior, he's not an athlete, he's not gonna play athletics. And so we're just looking at a school. I get a call from J.R. Plody, leaves a message on my phone. Coach, I was just thinking about the Jackrabbits. He's already signed, right, it's done. Coach, I'm thinking about the Jackrabbits, thinking about you, appreciate what you did recruiting, just wanted to say hi, right? My wife doesn't do that, right? <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you, J.R. Plody's deal. Offered at New Mexico State, 1A program, offered at Air, uh, at Air Force, 1A program, and committed to South Dakota State. So I can say we kicked their whatever tail. J.R. Plody's parents are both hearing impaired. All right, and they're, and they're, again, it's a separated, the divorce home. So in both home visits, this is an awesome thing. I don't know if you, if you can imagine this. In, in both home visits, both times we were together, Jr. had to do all the communication. All right, so he's talking to me, signing to his parents, answering their signs, and so on. And I'm just sitting there going, I hope this guy comes. All right? and, uh, and again, we beat some good schools. Just a great. Uh, great young man. He's going to play defensive end for us. Um, maybe gives you a little a little insight in uh, into South Coast State recruiting. Um, and then the, the 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 somebody asked me about preferred walk on. I'm going to talk about that for a little while. In the NCAA, the rule is uh, whether you know if Steve got a scholarship and Jerry didn't. We can announce those guys. Obviously, we need Steve's letter of intent. But we need to know Jerry has been admitted to school, has a letter of admissions being admitted. And so we can, we can announce those guys in the same list. And you wouldn't have to say, these guys got scholarships and these guys are preferred walk-ons, right? And some of you maybe think that's no big deal, but 
uh, I think it's a big deal. And, and that we weren't trying to say they signed a letter of intent. We're trying to say these guys are joining South Dakota State football. Well, uh, Mary Molbina, who's the compliance person for the Missouri Valley, said you cannot do that. You have to separate those people out. And her theory is, Jerry, again, the preferred walk-on, he's not ours yet. And so Dakota State, Augustana, Mankato State, University of South Dakota needs to know that he's still available. That's her feeling. So we had to separate them out. We do not call them preferred walk -ins. They are recruited, non-scholarship athletes. And those eight guys that are in the back there, um, Bloom and Carlson and Finnis and Kreitzfeld, Snell, Schuster, Sickink, and Silver, Silver, Cyberling, excuse me. Those guys all came on home uh, official visits. We were in many of their homes and uh, committed to us uh, to, to, to walk on, but to pursue their dream. And I would expect every one of those guys will contribute, or we wouldn't have recruited them. Okay? You know, I, I, I believe this, uh, I was told by one of my mentors, there's three important decisions in life, three real important decisions in life. And one of them is what school you go to. All right? Think about it. All right? The friends you make, the spouse you, the major, the, the you know, all that stuff. It isn't a flipping deal. And so if I'm helping guys make decisions, I'm held to a higher standard than to tell them a story. Just come here. And now you Nebraska fans, right? Get thick skin here for a second. Look at, look at Nebraska's roster in the spring. 150 guys. Preferred walk-ins. You know? And three of those guys play. They don't, a lot of them don't get to even go on the trip. And you know what? They're still heroes in their towns, but they don't get to play football. And that, I'm not going to do that to a kid at our level, all right? So you can, you can, you can bash me all you want, but I, I don't think that's right. I think if a kid can play, you recruit him. If a kid can't play, you tell him, go to school XYZ if football is important to you. If you want to go to Ag, you know, there are a lot of choices, you know. Uh, but but uh, you, you, you need to be honest with kids. Don't throw darts at me about that Nebraska deal, all right? <laughs> I'll throw darts back, all right?